Well, happy weekend. You got Reed on the road again with Cynthia Reed. That's your cue. Oh, and Kenny Reed. Yeah. Yeah. We out on a country road, y'all. He ain't in no six lanes of traffic. So he don't but even I'm know still his name paying, no more. But I'm still paying attention to my surroundings. Mm -hmm. Like the guy in front of us is like weaving back and forth. You better watch well, that. No, I'm watching out for that deer that comes running across the There's field. no deers out here, all right, my dear. I mean, the deers come out at no, night. No, the deers come out in the daytime, too. They don't come out in the daytime yes, all they the do. time. Except well, for that maybe one. They, they might not do it all the time, but they do. Well, that one quirky time that we... Well, just like the one time I had a deer run in front of me, it was daytime. I mean, we wasn't here, but I mean, you know, we were closer to it what was, I thought was I, I, I in think town. That, I think that the deers are getting crazier, is the world getting crazier, but you know, animals were here first, so you gotta respect the animals. They're busy running for people, so they jump out in front of cars. They don't jump out in front of cars. Deers are not suicidal. What were we talking about? That's what happens when you don't concentrate. They just be running. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're seeing this, it's our little reality read on the road here. Well, corn's getting tall. I ain't talking about corn. Some people don't even know what corn looks like. If you can see it in the background, it's it's well, it's it's <laughs> biogenetic corn. I, I it's not I ain't eating. Well, it's one of the uh, main things in Indiana. Yeah. As if you're from Indiana. No. Of course, you guys aren't from Indiana. I don't know. <laughs> There's more than corn in Indiana. Remember they had that slogan a few years ago. You could have places to go. There's more than corn in Indiana. I have yet to see more than corn in Indiana, which is why we get out of town. So, you know, I, I like beaches. I like palm trees. I like sand between my toes. The only sand you're going to get between your toes is if you go buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot, you know? You, know, you might go to the sandbox. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's been in the sandbox. But anyway, we're going through this tiny little town. We just like going out on the road. There goes a motorcycle. Anyway, um, I said all that, I guess, to get to say this. There's people out there that, you know, thank goodness this person in front of us is turning. They were like weaving all around. I don't know what they were doing or talking about. But, you know, don't ever be in a hurry. We talk about texting and driving. That's topic number one. Texting and driving, or not paying attention, or dropping something, or you have your dog in your lap, you're, you're driving, and it looks like that the dog is at the wheel. That was free one time we saw that, remember? Yep. I said, Kenny, is that dog driving for real? It's like, what? And the person driving was so short, and they had this big dog sitting on their lap, thinking, who does that? Maybe you know somebody that does that out there, but... You know, in the end up, we saw like a, a person had got T-boned on our way back from convention. You know, we had almost gotten back. Ooh, look, windmills. I guess the protest didn't work. I'm so glad. We got these windmills like they do up in the Chicago area. If you go up Interstate uh, 65. It's just a couple of them. Well, they're growing. Oh, you start out with a couple. You know, it's kind of like um, you start out with a couple of dogs, a male dog, female dog, you end up with a bunch of puppies. Of course, they grow up and reproduce, and the windmills are like that, you know. Maybe it gets bigger as we go further. I, I don't know, but I think it's great. We haven't gone this way in, in a while. Yeah, and I suggested that we go this way, remember? Yeah, you suggested. And you listen after 44 and a half years of hanging with me intimately. You listen. I've been listening for 44 and a half years. You hear, but you don't necessarily listen. But we've been married for 44, coming up August 23rd. And um, it That's just, this month. Yeah, it, but it just gets better. I don't feel like so much anymore. You know, we have fun. We, you know, it's just really nice to have a friend that you can just bare your soul to. Um, it's nice to be able to go on the road. It is. On the road again. Well, I was talking about bearing your soul to someone, you know. Um, this guy, it's like we start thinking alike. We have started thinking like for a while, you know, like I can have a thought and you can have a thought and I'll say it. And then you say, I was just thinking of that. Or you can have a thought and I can have a thought and you'll say it. And I, I said, what did I just say? Anyway. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, I was just thinking about that too. But 
but you know we have traveled so many places and I don't know if I can even count the number of places but I want more places to go I like to get out yeah and Hawaii is on his bucket I'll, list it's on mine too Hawaii you can. people talk about Hawaii I mean my mom and dad have been to Hawaii a couple of times uh, daddy has gone up to the eternal paradise a couple of years now and I just see my mom is still traveling and I want to be like that not that I want you to go anywhere before I do but if you do I'm still gonna travel I'm gonna take my time I'm gonna rush yeah and speaking of road trips they're more peaceful when we take a road trip to an airport and we get on the plane and I'm chilling and he's chilling. Usually he's sleeping. I love chilling. <laughs> and I don't mind him. Like, you guys ever think about, you know, the delays are not necessarily a bad thing? I would rather be delayed in an airport, Kenny, than end up, you know, like, oh, shoot. I don't want to get on a plane when, when the plane's mm -hmm. not ready. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who have never flown before, Oh, there was a time we got on the plane in Miami International several years back. And we had to sit and wait. We were supposed to leave at like 8 o'clock. We got to the airport at around 6 a.m. And then something happened. It was like flying Delta. Don't expect luggage to arrive, Delta. And we, which is the reason why you have travel insurance. Uh, sorry, no hate, Delta. We, we like y'all. Y'all friendly. Not as friendly as Southwest, but y'all friendly. Okay. But here's the thing. We, I had a bad sciatica issue. Okay. And that's before I started seeing this amazing chiropractor in Indianapolis. And I, uh, I was like hurting anyway. And I was sitting there and then they said the plane will be delayed because of a mechanical issue. Okay, cool. When are you going to leave? Well, about 10 o'clock. Another announcement. Uh, pilot refuses to fly. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, well, you know, this is really getting good. Pilot refuses to fly. It's like, serious. Now we got to go find another plane. Got to find a spare plane or a placement. So I was coming in a different route. Then we have to wait till like two o'clock. We wait. Of course, my sciatic is fired up, right? And I'm sitting in the plane doing this, trying to twist around and get comfortable. We finally leave, it was like after 4 p.m. Now, we have been at the airport for going on, mercy, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. And boy, oh boy, people were ticked and fussing and cussing and stuff. But I just sat there with my little pain in my right leg, the sciatic nerve pressure. And I got on the plane, finally, when we got on the plane. Got home late that night, and I think that's the same time you lost your keys, isn't it, Kenny? He came I'm back in sure. Indianapolis. Back well, anyway, he did lose a whole set of keys at Indianapolis International. I don't know if we ever got him back. Maybe we did. I think we got him back, yeah. So not only do you lose luggage, sometimes you lose keys, but you're supposed to hang on to your keys, you know, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, back to the story. When I was sitting on flight, Delta, I asked the lady, I said, um, I'm a travel agent, like it really mattered to her, didn't but I said, I've got this sciatica issue. And she actually moved us to a more comfortable seat. You know, the plane was full, but she, she moved us anyway. And um, we had um, an ice pack. You know, she kept checking on me. Is you okay? Because the ice kind of dulled the pain in my leg. You know, it was before I started getting chiropractic adjustments. And um, I said to myself, you know, this isn't so bad. It's, people really care about people. And if you have a job that you like, even if you don't like it, you're still getting a paycheck. If you don't like it, do something about it. And um, follow your passion because we weren't born to be W-2 employees. I don't know about him, but eight, well, no, 11 years ago, you retired. And Kenny, you know what you told the people who told you you were too young to retire? Yeah, we're clear. Yeah. Okay, there, I'll stop it. I told them I wasn't working on being old. I was just working on being retired. Guess what? I'm still working on being retired. Uh, but Enjoying it too. But we're not tired of being retired. Some people get tired of being retired. 
you know? Yeah, they say they don't know what they're going to do, but hey, I know what I'm going to do. Nobody programmed you to work a job at a desk, or nobody programmed you. We self-program ourselves, I think. That, ooh, look, trailer park. Anyway, or yeah, camp out. Look at all those. That's wow, neat. that is different. You know, that's a good real estate investment because people want to get away if they can't afford to go somewhere nice like Sandals or, you know, wherever. they We love Sandals. Huh? But the bottom line is, if you have a bunch of land, rent it out to people, rent out lots with campers because campers are a big deal now for people. I don't want to be in one. You know, I'm a resort girl but and a cruise ship girl. But that's a good idea for an investment, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay if that's it what is. you want to do. They can even go pull their own corn off of somebody else's field. Try end up getting <laughs> shot, but you know. Somebody else's field. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Hey, let's have some corn to go back to the corner. Anyway. Yeah, we go camping out there because we can walk over to other people's field and pull corn. <laughs> and maybe roasting corn all day. <laughs> you know, get, get as many ears as you want. And get as many, you know, arrest warrants like you're stealing my property. That's my corn. But uh, anyway. But yeah, uh, the whole idea of just getting away, and we talk like this all the time, you know, just get away because when you get away, it's cheaper than a doctor bill. It's no side effects to it other than a smile on your face every time you think about the memory you created, you know. But when people talk about, I got to go to work sick, I never could understand that, Kenny. I, I mean, people get sick and tired going to their job or to their even their business that can hold them hostage you know people don't know how to balance 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 out job and business or career and business or you know if you're a ceo or a president of a company or you're even volunteering for something people don't know how to balance that out they don't know how to say no and that's why even though we have our surge 365 membership we still like going to timeshare recruitment things you know because they fill out the form, you know, at the mall like we did yesterday, and we just filled out the form just to go and practice saying no to them. No. Uh, well, let me get a third party. No. And we just say no. And it drives them crazy, you know, because we have the best of everything. We got our hotels. We got our cars. We got our luxury homes. We got our timeshares that we don't have to be a timeshare member of, but we can get in any timeshare in the world, literally, in the world. There's... <laughs> You know, what else did I mean? Oh, yeah, the activities, you know, the concerts and the ball games and, and even the shopping. There's like 5,000 stores in our Surge 365 membership, you know? Yeah. And, and we can, yeah, well, I love to shop, okay? But just the shopping alone gets us reward credits. In fact, between the shopping and the travel and when other people use our Vortex, the free one that we give out that generates points, and we get 60% of what they save in cash, and they're going to save 85 to 90% of the time going through all these other sites, and folks get flipped out. You know, they think, oh, well, how come I got to the hotel, and it said, stop sign, How it said booking.com or Priceline or Expedia. You book through that when you actually book through your Vortex. Folks shouldn't get freaked out about that. Because what Vortex does is goes into all those platforms and it finds the lowest internet price with the taxes and chops it down, I tell people, in little bitty pieces and throws out all the excess and gives you a price that beats everybody else sometimes by hundreds of dollars. And so you take that little bitty piece and whatever you save as our free Vortex guest, what happens, babe? Well... They say we get paid. How much? 60%. Huh? I can't hear you. 60%. 60%. Now, that's just from sharing. And we're just looking for more people, right, to well, share the we're Vortex. Just people who want to share. They want to partner with us. If like, you think you can people, stand us, you some know. Some people want to get paid to share. Oh, gosh. That's just the easy part. You know, I don't yeah. get churches, you organizations, clubs, anything. schools. You can own your own vortex, give it out to all the parents. Everybody's going to take like a spring break, a fall break, a whatever, or a summer break. If kids even have summer breaks anymore, they go back to school so soon. Remember when we had all these fun summer breaks? We had three solid months out of school. Remember? 
Yeah, that's a long our, time ago. Man, we got our school in the end of June. No, at the end of May or in early June. June, July, August. We didn't go back till after Labor Day. We had fun when we were kids. Yep. It's rough being a kid nowadays. Oh, man. That, that's like all the time. Go outside and play. You know, Mom and them, they would say, go outside, come back before the sunlight. Before the sun goes before down, the sun goes before down. the street lights the come, street on. Lights come on, uh huh. And you better be back in the house before the street lights come on too. Yep. So, yeah. And they would literally lock us out. It's nice. Go play. Cause that's our parents' little. We didn't vacation. get locked out. Well, sometimes we did. If I had friends trying to come uh, in the house, we like, left the doors open. It was back in the good old days. People didn't steal. <laughs> this is true. They didn't. Oh man. I oh. Uh, Memories. Everybody knew everybody. Mm -hmm. Every did. We knew everybody's relatives who knew everybody. All around the block and then some. And we could ride our bikes and didn't have helmets. Didn't need them. You skin your knee. Mama clean it up, put some Mercura Chrome on it, and go back outside and play. You know? Just go back out. Get outside. Go outside. They had stuff to do. We had home cooked meals. You know? And we had a garden. We had a lot of good stuff. And those are the memories that I love to go out and, and see how other people live when they're in, you know, other places, other countries. I just, I love those tours. Like that one European tour I just booked with that one lady that was a referral. And she loved what we set up for her. Just loved it. And, uh, you know, oh, you got a cruise coming up. I'm making you in happy half a mile, party. slight right. Okay, half a mile, slight right. A little lady in the box is talking to us. But anyhow, here's I, the deal. I, I told you. Yeah, it goes right up in here. I'm trying to talk about I your cruise on September happen. 7th. Yeah, but the bottom line is what? I told you this is going to run up into 31. Anyway, we're having a birthday cruise for him. Uh, or not. Well, but it's going to It's my. Fast. Yeah, it is. It's my birthday. Right. All right. My birthday cruise, Your our anniversary cruise, our birthday cruise, and was Mr. Reed your teacher cruise. We just decided to call it was Mr. Reed your teacher. So if anybody worked with you or if anybody was your student or if anybody just passed in the hallway, they're uh, invited. If they worked with me, then I wasn't their teacher. Well, you were with them as a teacher, you know, a teacher associate. But we're going to your 50th reunion now. 50 years. You think those people will look the same? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I remember 20 years ago, I kept saying, do I look that old? Eh, got a few little grades. Well, they don't tell how old they look now. Well, it's just going to be really interesting because we're going to be up in there, you know, flying gorgeous. You know, Mr. Fly and Miss Gorgeous. I guess that's what we're going to do. Hi, how are you? I'm Mr. Fly. I'm Miss Gorgeous. <laughs> what kind of reception that'll be? Oh, we just walk in the room like we know everybody. Hey, good to see you. How you doing? So glad you're here. Man, I couldn't wait to get here and they'd be looking at us like, uh, Who are you? Yeah, you don't remember? Oh man, it, it, and I, I didn't even go to your school and I'm going to act like I went there. Hey, good to see you again. I, it's been years. I just freaked them out. <laughs> well, actually, some of them you maybe saw. I don't know. I never knew you. I don't you. think I remember it. I never knew you till 1973 after I was in the, let's see here, I was in the Miss Black Ball State Scholarship Pageant in 73. And then 74, when I finally decided to go out with you because my friend Rhonda, a roommate, and then your frat brother, Roger, he said, and she said, y'all should get together. And I was working, you know, I just drop kicked that one dude because I caught him cheating on me. And then there was the other time where basically I was hungry and I needed a ride to the library and nobody else could take me to the library back home because I was working on some research. And so you decided to, well, you were trying to go out with me anyway, and I just said, and he got a car. So, you know, I called you. Well, first time we went out to see Play Mystic for me with Clint Eastwood. I don't like Clint Eastwood no more. But other than that, uh, we went out and had pizza. He's old dude now. He's old and crotchety and strange, you know. But anyhow, we went out. Man, I liked you and you liked me. And we, you know, at one time we sat in the park all night long in the car and went to sleep. Yes, we did go to sleep in the car. That was it. And so we um, got knocked on the window by the police officer. She to light in the window. And I'm laying against you. It's like, everything okay? Uh, yeah.